Hello, and welcome to In Search of Bonham's 16-inch Thermogloss Bass Drum. As many of us Zeppelin fanatics for years have speculated, at least one of Bonham's Thermogloss Bass Drums appears to be 16 inches deep. Here come some picks that I'll put up that clearly to me depict a 16 inch deep thermoglass Ludwig bass drum. But, but there are also clear shots that do depict the drum as 14 inches deep. And they are... And those pictures are actually very few and far between. Years ago, when I had realized that Paul Thompson had gotten a hold of Bonham's Thermogloss double bass kit, which actually is two 26 inch bass drums, a 9 by 13 and a 12 by 14. Remember, it's often been speculated too that he might have had a 12 by 15 inch rack tom, which he could have. But a 15 inch rack tom wouldn't fit in the Ludwig Atlas snare stand in the manner that it does. That, it, if it would, that would be totally flat. It wouldn't be arched as it is basket style. Anyway, back to the bass drums. I did have a chance to contact Paul Thompson on his website, which I don't know if he has anymore. But you, you post the questions like right out for everybody to see. Like I didn't call him or I didn't have his separate email address. Although we have just become friends on Facebook. <laughs> but he said, I said, well, Paul, I said, A, for the love of God, you're not the rat bastard that cut that freaking 12 by 14 inch Tom down to 10 by 14, are you? He said, no. He said it happened before. Right, Max? Two, um, he said, I asked him, I said, well, are the bass drums 14 or 16 inches deep? Now, a guy like that, there's a lot of named drummers who aren't really gearheads. He might not have measured them. He might have just been like, well, they're 14. He did say that the two bass drums he had there are the same depth. Now, there, there are lots of us that have this theory, numerous of us on, on drum forums. George Flutus is one of them. I mean, George, who smoked Moby Dick like a Cornish hen, and I would like to say that he really did kind of just go into that here. He, I have on my camera, for some reason, on my Nikon 3300, I could only do high-def vids in 20-minute increments, okay? So what happened was is we were at about the 17-minute mark, and he went into Moby Dick. So I had to edit that together when I restarted it. By the way, that symbol that hit the floor was a Sabian... <laughs> Not my, any of my prize Pisces. Uh, if it was, I said to somebody else, that would have been a snuff film. I'd have gotten a lot of hits with that. Flutus would have been playing. I'd have been like, <laughs> know what I'm saying? Flutus is, in fact, we're doing more videos with Flutus. Anyway, but back to the 16-inch bass drum depth. Paul Thompson said they were both the same depth, at least the ones he had, which may, I mean, no offense against Paul. He might be, you might go there. I mean, let me put it this way. I've seen interviews with Stuart Copeland where he's like, yeah, you know, my first kit was a Tama Wonder Star. He didn't, you know, he doesn't know anything about Imperial Stars or whatever. You know what I mean? I mean, we all knew, we devout Copelandites knew that the drum that Tama based that chrome over brass drum on was a, lot, was a pearl Jupiter. Not actually a Jupiter model, but a pearl, you know, chrome over brass. But I digress. The 16-inch deep bass drums. Again, look at most pictures. The drum really does appear to be a 16-inch depth in most pictures. Now I'm going to put up real fast on eBay now. There's a 26 by 16 natural maple, probably from the late 80s, early 90s on there now, which I'll put up now. Shing! So use that as a reference, the angle that it's at. Now there are photographic filters and stuff that they can put on that does squash images. 
that it's used actually quite a bit. But in a lot of these pictures, you would notice in people, you would notice relative to everything else if it was squashed. And there's no doubt that there are certain squashed things and photographs that occur here in the Zeppelin lines as well as everybody else. In fact, let me give you an example of what I mean by squashed. There's a band that was big around here that got pretty big nationally. Bonacorsi guys, wonderful guys. There are two guys in the band called Freddie Jones. Anyway, one of the dudes in the band, I can't remember if it's the singer, but there's a photograph I found of him, and I found two, I was looking up something. Anyway, two of the pictures came up. One is the clean, kind of rough picture that was just taken by the photographer, and the other one is sort of after treatment. So one is this dude sort of standing there, and then the next one is how it looks processed, scrunched down a little. That could account, theoretically, for the 16-inch appearance of Bonham's bass drum depth. But here's the thing. Bonham got that endorsement when he first went out on tour with Vanilla Fudge, their first American tour, Carmine Apis, which I'm pretty sure that's how you say it, Apice, Apice, let's just call him Carmine, had a big kit like that. It was two 26s by 16 and a 12 by 15-inch rack time. He did have that kit. You can see pictures of it, okay? But, and, and Carmine's too also had, I think, the curve out spurs. It's interesting that Bottom got his bass drums with the retracting old school spurs, which are set much lower on the bass drum, and there's a pair of them. And Flute has pointed something out, that most of the time on the deeper bass drums, as Ludwig moved into 16-inch depths, they did put double spurs on their bass drum, the, the, the thick one-half-inch curving kind, Okay. But again, there are some photographs that clearly show those bass drums as 14-inch depth. I mean, they do. But the majority, like I'm saying, depict this to me and to George and to numerous other people on Wally Dallenbach, some of these other guys, my friend Joel Bruno, Peisty Bob, um, numerous other Zeppelinites, you know who we are, that see a 16-inch deep bass drum there. So I don't know if there were maybe two different kits. My theory for a long time, a lot of our theories, was that the bass drums were two different depths. Like back in those days, if you'd see Ginger Baker, his Silver Sparkle kit, you'd see a 22 and a 20. And same with uh, Nick Mason, who I think essentially modeled his kit, his same Silver Sparkle lug kit, same thing. You might see a 24 and a 22. Maybe Bonham, my theory was, was got a 14-inch depth and a 16-inch depth. But again, Paul Thompson said they were the same depth. So we don't know. It's a mystery. I think we should uh, kidnap Jimmy Page and possibly Paul Thompson, like Rupert Pupkin and the King of Comedy. What Thompson will be like, and we'll be like, where are these drums? What the hell's going on? What tube limiters did you use, Page? For the love of God, where were the microphones placed? Those types of things. But anyway, that is the mystery of the 16-inch deep bass drum. We're going to go on about that. I'm going to have guest. We're going to have interviews here with people and their theories on it. Okay. By the way, I do want to point out that yes. This is the Ludwig Blue Curlite. Blue Curlite used in the George Flutus Moby Dick video. Oh, this is it. It's right here in my possession. Anyway, so here it is. See, you'll see it just has regular 20 strands. It has the patented Terry Keating tuning. <laughs> People have asked about, there is an Evans hydraulic black head on here. Now, here's the deal. Part of that Bonham snare sound is a slightly heavier head. Remember he said, oh, I use Ludwig Ambassadors and Emperors. Well, in those days, the Ludwig Emperors, and I think even the Ambassadors, now they call them like vintage, Remo resells them now as vintage Emperors and vintage Ambassadors. They were thicker. I even think that the original Ambassadors might have been two 5 mil plies. Whereas the modern ambassadors the past 30 years are one 7.5 mil, I think. And then, the I don't know, something like that. I'm not 100% sure on that. But I do know, remember, the original ambassadors and the original emperors were thicker. Not to mention, remember in drum solos and stuff, when you see Bonham doing Moby Dick, you do see him assing around with this and also the tone control. Bonham used a tone control, okay? Maybe some songs he let the drum ring, like maybe The Ocean or um, Dancing Days. Remember, it's, it's, okay? So again, you can use any head. I recommend, um, I think a, like an Evans G2 might really approximate the sound. 
a Ludwig, just regular Emperor Coden. Anyway, wasn't it great having Flutus here? He's a good dude, man. And I got to tell you, he's one of the most humble people that I've ever met. And he's also a guy, when the reissue Giant Beats came out, if you go back and see, God, it's 12 years ago now, I <clears throat> played up on all the forums how potentially jazz-oriented they were. That's not the right verbiage. But a lot of jazz guys would love those because, remember, the reissues are different than the originals. They are. The shape is different and the tone's different. But not necessarily. I mean, I actually prefer the sound of the reissues to the originals, by and large. With the exception of the high, there, there's something about the original hi-hats, which is magnifique. And by the way, Eric Pice, remember you told me you were going to make me a pair of 15-inch sound edge giant beats. Not holding you to it, but at the very least develop them, maybe sell them. Or at least give them to other endorsers. In fact, you got to give George Flu George Flutus needs a Peisty endorsement. You know why? Because he loves Peisty's, and he also loves B8. He is a renowned jazz drummer that loves B8. In the past 12 years, Peisty. I know I'm, uh, I'm sidetracking, but Peisty has, ironically, with the reissue Giant Beats, in an attempt to go back to the original rock, what was designed, the irony is, for the original design of the carry through amplified music Giant Beats, actually made a symbol that actually sounds much better than most B8 symbols did before that in the near field. Remember, 2002 sounded better in the near field. Typically, B20 alloy will sound better in the near field. I think more pleasing to the ear when you're sitting behind it. But at a distance, it sounds lower pitched and you can't really hear it. Whereas B8 is different. It can sound harsher in the near field, but from a distance sounds nice and clean and you can hear it. Well, with the giant beats, they took a huge step forward in making B8 more um, appetizing, what's the word, acceptable, there's another word, appealing to drummers, especially jazz drummers. And now, by the way, with the 900 series that's coming out, they're, I think they're replacing the alphas in the, in the hierarchy. Those have the potential. I think those are game changers for B8 alloy, okay? I think there's a lot of jazz guys that are going to like, especially those rides, okay, and those hats. Anyway. So, Peisty, Eric, if you don't want to send me my 15-inch <laughs> sound edge giant beads, I understand. By the way, I think you should go back to the more ripples. Remember, the original, original giant um, sound edge hats that were 602 had many ripples, as many as like 54. Now I think the standard's 34. Those more contact points, I think, sound better. Maybe there was a breakage issue. But wait a minute. We're still talking about the 16-inch deep bass drums. More videos on the way. Please subscribe if you haven't. More drum covers coming up. More flutists. More guest drummers. More of a lot of stuff. So thank you for subscribing. Thank you for subscribing. This video brought to you by Terry Keating Greatest Hits. Look for it on eBay.